Welcome to the Fat Girl Funeral Podcast, where you will learn to bury the thoughts that are keeping you overweight and build weight loss habits for life so you can start living your best self. Here's your host and author of the best selling book, Fat Girl Funeral, Dr. Angela Tran. Hey, hey, you guys. This is our absolute first episode of Fat Girl Funeral. I have a special guest with me. And before I begin, I just want to let you know, thank you so much for listening to this episode. You know, Fat Girl Funeral is based off of my best selling book on Amazon, where we talk about getting rid of that negative self inner critic that's keeping us from getting to our dreams pretty much. And when I started this podcast, believe it or not, our first guest, Denise, was the total inspiration on, you know, when I had this, uh, you know, opportunity to start, they asked, you know, well, who do you want to be your first guest? And I'm like, Denise, I didn't even like, it was very habitual. It didn't even like, I didn't even have to think about it is because, you know, your journey needs to be shared just like our message of just bringing health back as a priority. And we love you so much. So, so I wanted to kind of introduce to everybody, this is Denise. She was one of our very first patients at MedFit Medical Weight Loss, uh, which is the company that I own that I started back in 2012. And Denise, the reason why I chose her is not just because of this, you know, before and after picture and that she's basically lost, you know, over 50 pounds. I want to share Denise's story because obviously there is, you know, blood, sweat and tears behind those pictures. We all get to see the fabulous (laughs) before and after pictures, but we don't really know what goes in. And the fact that you've kept it off all these years, that's the story that people need to hear, not just the, you know, the before and after the come and go, it's the long lasting, you know, results. So Denise, congratulations. Welcome Woo! to the first episode of Fat Girl Funeral. <laughs> I am happy to be here. Very, very, very happy to be here. Always glad to be a part of anything that MedFoot puts forward. So yes, yes. Well, we're excited to have you. So, um, so I want to just kind of just dive in and, and um, cause I know that a lot of our listeners can relate to you right from the very start. Can you just kind of share with us what your challenges were before you met, you know, me and the MedFit team, what kind of challenges regarding your health and your weight that you were really struggling with at that time? Well, I, um, by the way, my name's Denise. I am 40 plus, um, <laughs> and I so 40 was, check box, right? I'm 40 in the check, check box. box. Yes. I'm in the box. Um, and I have uh, a little girl and at the time she was four. So at that point, baby weight should have come off at that point. Everything should be back to normal. Everything was supposed to be supposed to be. And that's not how the world works. And so my bigger challenges that I was looking at is that I had this false sense of good health because my blood pressure was okay. My stats were fine. My blood work was okay. So I'm thinking, you know, there's no concern at this point, but there's nothing to worry about. Um, and then you get on the scale and you look at the number and you think, well, that can't be right. <laughs> that scale must be broken. I must have done something different. But that's not the case either because I was in the range of obesity. And you don't think of yourself as that when you are living in the moment. But when you look at the numbers, they are what they are. So I want to say that my basic health issue was that I was tired and I was fatigued. And I was overall just defeated. Um, I was defeated mentally. And so the bigger challenges medically that I had to work on were mental health issues relating to my weight and where I wanted to go. So the bigger obstacle I had to face was literally my ignorance around Mm -hmm. weight loss, what that meant and what it entailed and all the pieces that MedFit provided. So I can't say that I had a thyroid issue or diabetes or whatever, because I was still in that okay category with all the other Mm -hmm. Um, medical stats. And I was living in a falsehood because I was one, maybe two months away from becoming something that would have been an issue. 
Yeah. And thank you for sharing. And, you know, for the listeners out there, you know, I have a daughter too. And, and, and Denise's daughter, Mia, oh my gosh, I love her to death. And I've seen her grow up. She literally mm-hmm. was a baby when I first, you know, met her and to just see her and, uh, you know, obviously you're an amazing role model, but something about kids and specifically little girls just make you realize, wow, I really need to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's going to need me, you know, yeah. type of thing. So, so what were the steps? Like, how did you even like begin searching for, you know, your next journey uh, and how to, you know, resolve this? <laughs> well, I had gotten to the point where I was investing so much money in cover up clothing. Oh, and yes. you know, my, my friends at work called it a hunk of fabric. It was some sort of cardigan <laughs> that I would wrap around myself or a very elongated scarf that I would wrap around, anything that I would hunk of fabric and I could hide behind. I spent a lot of money on hunks of fabric. Um, and I was also spending a lot of money on, um, you know, bigger sizes. Every mm-hmm. season there was, mm-hmm. it, they didn't fit anymore. There was this, it was that. And it was crazy. And I was looking at what I was putting out and what, I'm, I'm a cheapskate. So yes. <laughs> if, if I'm not getting a return on that investment, I need to rethink things. So that's really where it came to be, where I was thinking, am I going to keep buying hunks of fabric mm-hmm. or am I going to own up and face this issue that I have been in denial about for years? Um, yeah. And it really came down to that. And so I started looking at, you know, the websites and the internet mm-hmm. and this and that. And I had literally tried every fad that has probably come across. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when people say I've tried them all, yeah, yeah, I've got the whole bookshelf of do-it-yourself diet baloney. Oh my um, goodness! I've tried every pill. I've tried every vitamin. I've tried. Oh my gosh, you you can't even. And so you start adding all that up, and that price tag, and mm-hmm. you're still at the same weight. And you're like, what the? This is not working at all. So right, yeah. I got to a point of absolute frustration, and um. I was frustrated with myself. I was frustrated with my weight and the cost that Mm -hmm. I was putting forward. And I went into my daughter's um, daycare one day and I looked around and I was the fat mom. Mm. I was not an average mom. I was not uh, a kind of big mom. I was the fat mom. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel embarrassed for myself. I felt embarrassed for my child because I felt that it was, you know, like you said, as a mom, you want to have that good, healthy behavior that you portray towards your kids. And I was not doing that. And I, it just was like, boom, Wow. what are you going to do about this? And I felt so much parental shame that Mm -hmm. I put on myself. And we've talked about this over and over again, Mm -hmm. over the years, but I just put it on myself as this inordinate amount of shame. Mm-hmm. And between the cost and the shame, I was like, this has to change. Mm-hmm. And it's the time is now. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that with us. We all know that we can relate. In fact, I was, you know, talking to, you know, one of my best friends um, that uh, we, we feel like we have comparisonitis. <laughs> and we have to like keep up with the other mothers and and it's not just with health but mm-hmm. oh you know she takes dance and she takes piano and they're doing soccer and we just feel like we're chasing something only because we're trying to again uh, compare ourselves so it's uh, you analogy. know it's tough um, mm-hmm. so what drew you to us like uh, how did how uh, obviously we know the universe had a little bit of you know, that extra touch to bring us together. But how did you, how did you make that all happen? (laughs) Well, I, I was literally just looking at different websites and different information and um, different comments that were out there. And I had made a couple of different phone appointments with different clinics in the metro area, for those of you who aren't familiar with Denver. So a couple different places. And MedFit um, was the first to return my call. And the first to speak to me like I was a human being and not a failure. Mm -hmm. And the first to make sure that they knew that this was not about the weight, that it's something else. So it was like, you know, why don't you come in and talk to us and let's see what options we have for you. Just come in and talk to us. We're not going to, you know, do the self-evaluation of whatever over the phone. Come in and see us and then we'll, we'll figure it out. And I was like, well, that, that feels pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> they they want to talk to me. Well, fabulous. And so I went into the office and... Um, you know, you're still, 
got that big treasure trove of your your shame with your hunk mm-hmm. of fabric over you <laughs> going into the office <laughs> trying to hide it all. And and you 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 think I'm put together, I'm composed. And then I got into the office with you, Dr. Tran, and I'm pretty sure it was about two minutes in where I started bawling because <laughs> yes. I'm a crier and mm-hmm. that's what I do. And I started <laughs> crying because it wasn't about the shame. It wasn't about the weight. It was all those other issues that I had been in complete oblivion about that you barely even touched on in that first meeting and saying, you know what, we're going to help you through this and we're going to work together. Sold. I'm in. Yes. Where do I sign? Take my money. <laughs> Great. Yes. You yeah. know what? I, I actually could. I kind of remember. I think you were wearing a red sweater. Like I, mm-hmm. I really felt like you were there on a mission. You yep. really walked in there with that type of body language and like, <laughs> you need to like, just totally cure me. Otherwise, I'm like leaving, you know, but uh, but, uh, it took a lot of courage. And uh, the cool part is, is, is that I was just an everyday, you know, hi, I'm Dr. Tran. I'm here to help, you know type of um nah. like how I am <laughs> nah. no so, no 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 it was um it was like it's that act of I've got it all together but deep down I have these other issues that you don't know about yeah and you broke you broke through that like I said mm-hmm. within like first two three minutes yes that's awesome that's awesome well good for you Dr. Tran <laughs> you Dr. Tran good job so well so yeah so we signed you up and we got you just you literally was you know like I said with intention on a mission and you know we were we just basically set you off you know what what was an aha <laughs> moment for you aka maybe like a fat girl funeral moment where you finally realize wow this is what I needed to do you know for my health it was um I want to say maybe my second or third one-on-one with you where you were calling me on my BS. <laughs> you were asking me questions. I was like, well, fluffy answer, fluffy answer. You're like, no, 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 no. What is your real goal? Why are you here? What's our, what, what's your purpose? And I thought it was, well, if I tell anybody this number, then I'll answer the question. Well, I want to be this number. This is the number. And you're like, no, 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 back it up, ding dong. You are giving me a line of BS and I can smell it a mile away. So I was like, oh my gosh, Whoa, what, what is it about? And I literally was like, boom, it's not the number. Oh my mm, gosh. And it yes. was in that second or third session where it was like, it's not the number. It is, what are you looking to get out of this for a lifetime? Because the whole thing about MedFit is, is it's not a number. Mm-hmm. Anybody can get me to a number. It was the whole, where are you going to be the rest of your life? Where do you see yourself yes. for your daughter? Where do you see yourself for your family? What are those goals? And I was like, kabam, I could have had yes. a V8, you know? It was just <laughs> ridiculous. Yes. Well, just to let you know, ding dong is actually a medical diagnosis. I think it's an ICD-10 eco. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know. Uh, yes. Yes. But uh, yeah, you, thank you. Oh my gosh, this is amazing to you know, just bring that up because, you know, we are about really going from within and, mm-hmm. you know, really more than half of the battle has nothing to do with food and exercise. And it really is all about mindset and behaviors. And I'm just so glad that we will. I I always tell people that, you know, we create transformations for people, but the reality is has had nothing to do with me changing you. It was all about uncovering you. Mm. I knew that I saw you in the beginning, but I also saw you in the end in the beginning. That's why I do what I do is this that I knew you had it in you. And this hunk of fabric <laughs> that you call it really was just covering you. So there was really yep. not a transformation per se. We were just, you know, unveiling what you thought you needed to hide. But that really wasn't the truth. And just to really be out there and, you know, wear health on your sleeve, you know, and, uh, just be amazing. So, you know, so fast forward, I mean, gosh, I'm hate to say it would like eight years, <laughs> you know, it's eight uh, years in April, uh, eight years. Um, you've kept it off. <laughs> that is like amazing. That's like, 
10 times better than just like losing the weight. But, um, you know, what, what would be like your one secret? What, um, you know, with all the listeners who just are tired of yo-yo, you know, dieting back and forth, what really clicked for you that has helped you to keep it off? I think uh, the biggest overall issue was, like you said, the being the real me and being honest with who that person is. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the biggest option I had to go forward and and have a lifestyle of maintenance and good health. Once I was able to own up to who I was and what I wanted and feel comfortable with that, with MedFit, then I was able to say, okay, this is a lifetime. This is a ongoing goal. Um, it's not that number, it's not the finish line. It is a full on 100% lifestyle and you need to know who you are. And I know, and everybody in the MedFit community knows, everybody in that MedFit office Mm -hmm. knows, I can't control myself all the time. It's not (laughs) possible. I wouldn't have gotten into the position in the first place if I was able to. And so when I am struggling, when I am having emotions or not having emotions, I need to reach out to that MedFit group and say, this is what's up. This is where I'm dealing with. And everybody comes together and says, did you look at this? Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. It'll pass. And it's that community support that I think no other thing in my life I have other than that MedFit group, because you'll chime in saying you did it, girl, or Jess will say, yes, girl. Yes. Or somebody will chime in saying, did you try? And it's that whole, I know who I am and I'm mm-hmm. okay with that. Yes. That builds that whole piece. And I have to be honest with everything that I am and everything that I'm not. And so the maintenance of the weight loss has to do with the community I Mm -hmm. choose to be a part of. And I choose to be a part of MedFit because that is where my support is. And that is where I can build off of. And that is where I can really test my knowledge in times of weakness. Okay. Dr. Tran said the protein bar is this plus that, (laughs) that, 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 but I got to flip that around. And so it's really just working that skill with my, with my tribe. Yes. Really what it is. Yes. No, that's awesome. And, you know, thank you so much. Cause you know, you really are part of our family and, you know, we really treat every patient like that. And, and just, it's uh, been a true, you know, joy to have you literally, I do consider you family just because we've been together for so long. And, uh, but that's why I get into this because I feel like this protectiveness over you. And I know that it's not easy, but I also know that you always, you know, come out on the end, you know, victorious in everything that you do. So um, I really appreciate you for sharing. I think I'm going to just leave the audience with one last, you know, piece of words of wisdom. You know, obviously we, we particularly as moms, you know, we're, we're giving, we want to take care of everyone, including family, but co-workers, in-laws, and, you know, the lady in front of you at the grocery store, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. it feels very, very awkward to do things for ourselves. And this is a very, you know, investment in yourself. So what kind of words of encouragement um, would you say to that person who literally is at the the, the brink of, you know, uh, setting up an appointment with us and, but just worried about, you know, spending money on themselves or investing in themselves, what would you say, you know, as kind of that little birdie in that ear for them? I would say that the time and money I invested back then is worth every minute of joy I have now, every single minute. Um, it was something that I didn't know how to do was to make time and invest in myself. And you guys taught me how to do that. And so it didn't feel comfortable the first couple sessions, couple weeks. I'm like, I don't know about a man. And you can. It's like any good habit. If you make it a habit, you'll continue to do it. And every time I went into MedFit or got an email or the Facebook group, how are you? How's it going? How can we support you? What do you need? And it was those pieces that I put the time and energy in, and money in first. And it has been almost you know, eight years now. And every year it's been worth it, absolutely worth it. And it's been a clean bill of health and it's been a whole lot of shame that it went out with a hunk of fabric and it's being part of this community that really makes everything that seems scary up front 
really worth it. Really, really good, worth good. It. Well, well, we appreciate your kind words, and like I said, no, um, it's just it, honesty, yes, it ain't kindness. Yes. It's mm. uh, it's basically <laughs> what we say: diet and exercise only gets you so far. Support and community gets you to the finish line. So, Absolutely, yeah. And uh, for hundred percent agree. Are listening? You know, we have a private Facebook group, Doctor Transformers. We have a ton of fun. We do. <laughs> you know, steps challenges, we're, you know, joking around, we're crying, we're laughing. And it's just one of the best, you know, support community groups around. And uh, that's just really what I want to build for everybody, because I know that not everybody has the the support that they need, you know, at home type of thing. So, well, Denise, we love you so much. You are amazing. You are literally just as inspirational to us. So thank you so much for being you and um, make sure you catch another episode of Fat Girl Funeral because we are here to help you uncover the real you. Thanks so much, Dr. Tran. Thanks for letting me be me. 